All right, welcome back to the channel. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. I'm going to do a disassembly and reassembly video on my M1A. Of course, M1A, or some folks still call it the M14, even though that's the military de designation for it, regardless of your manufacturer, the common... Um, common identifier for these weapons uh, the civilian version is the m1a mine is actually stamped uh, mine's built by james river armory it's actually stamped uh, rockola m14f but of course it is an m1a so <clears throat> it's built by james river armory in north carolina so let's get right into it first step should be uh as usual make sure that the weapon's clear my action is open so if you weren't aware of how to do that, nothing in the chamber. If you weren't aware how to do that, uh, your lever right here on the side is what holds your bolt assembly, bolt carrier assembly back. So you can visually inspect, make sure it's clear. I don't always do that in all my videos and I've been burned in the comments section a couple of times by it. So I've tried to make a better effort to include Next step, after making sure that your rifle is clear, um, you're going to flip the rifle off safe, <clears throat> take your rifle, rotate it upside down. Still got the sling. It might make it a little easier if you take the sling off. I'm going to leave mine on just for this. I've done it several times. So Your trigger group or your trigger guard right here, you're going to pull, you're going to grasp it this way and pull it back slightly. and then swing it outward. You see that movement there? And then this hole is where the trigger guard actually sits in and secures. And you have to pull it, you have to pull the tension back towards the rear, the butt stock of the rifle to um, actually get it to disengage. So grasp your rifle, pull back on your trigger guard, lift up and <coughs> Your uh, trigger assembly should swing out just like that. Now, I don't normally take anything else apart here. If I'm doing a good cleaning, I'll wipe everything down. And I'm gonna, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna set this aside. Next step, pay close attention. This The entire walnut stock, or whatever polymer, if yours is polymer. On mine, it's the walnut stock. It sits inside this lip here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the back end of your stock and just lift up on it and it's going to separate from the receiver. So I'm going to grasp the barrel. I've got the stock in my other hand. Sometimes you got to give it a nudge and it comes up just like that. So we'll take that off and we'll set it aside. Alright, you've got your receiver group here. I'm going to flip this upside down. And this is your operating rod right here. This is your op rod spring and you've got a follower in there and a little pin that holds that in. So you're going to want to take that pin. Usually on mine what I have to do is I have to push this, this spring guide forward a little bit and then you pull that pin downward that way. And then it will release your op rod spring and the guide. And you can just pull that apart and set it apart. Or set it to the side, rather. The next step is we're going to take the operating rod right here. And we're going to separate it from your bolt assembly group. Bolt assembly. And sometimes, some people get this the first try. Sometimes I get it the first try. Usually I have to play with it a little bit. If you take... Your operating rod and come all the way back and then back forward just a little bit there's a little sweet spot where it'll where it'll let go and there it is you rotate it down it's hung in here you just pull it out there's your operating rod next step is to get your bolt assembly out of here your bolt carrier I say bolt carrier I need to look at the TM and see what the proper turn is I say bolt carrier I'm used to the M16A1 or A2 rather uh, that the army uses so the bolt rides right along there just like that 
I never am able to get this thing back in and out as easily as it slides. So I just turned it a little bit and it comes right out. So there, there's the way it sits. I just twist it and sometimes you gotta wiggle it because that back side gets hung up on this lip in here. So there you go, there's your bolt carrier assembly or your bolt assembly and your receiver which has no bolt. All right, so here's your main part. You've got your bolt and receiver together up at the top. Operati operating rod spring, and there's your little spring guide. Operating rod, bolt assembly, trigger assembly, and of course your stock. Um, so let's put everything back together in the reverse order. Beginning with your receiver group, we're gonna get your bolt assembly, slide it back down in there, back in first, let it sit. You've got a, uh, a lug is what it's called on this side, just a little arm that sits in that recess and then this wheel device, looking device here that sits in your op rod. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push this all the way back because if you remember, well the next step is to put your op rod in. If you remember, your op rod has to catch on top of that wheel operating rod your op rod through and the way you have to install it it doesn't just sit straight on there sometimes you got to wiggle it around and get it in there so you so we've got it through the uh, eyelet here and then the next thing we have to get the op rod to, to sit on the bolt assembly so that it'll move it back and forth and usually it just falls into place there you go so we've got that in there Next thing is we're going to take our op rod spring, slide it back down inside the op rod here, just like that. So you can see, it's very short compared to the grand. If you have a grand, um, you know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna take our op rod spring guide. Now you'll notice that there, this thing has, is kind of shaped strangely on the, the flat part. That's what's gonna sit down in the gun, just like that. See where it's worn there, you're gonna sit just like that. So push it down in there. You get it if if you can get the, the spring to sit right here, it'll kind of sit on its own, but be careful with that tension. Push against the spring guide, and you press down on the pin and it slides back into place and it's there, and you can feel the tension when you charge the the bolt you can feel the tension in there so to get our stock nice walnut stock or polymer whatever yours is you're going to take the bottom end as far as you can go and slide it underneath here first now you want this can be a little tricky especially on mine because it's got this fake um fully automatic firing switch it's just that my particular one yours may not may or may not have that but I have to lift up on that to get that to sit right there on your op rod so you've got to get everything to slide just back in there and you'll know it because it doesn't wiggle or move around much if it sits in there just right you might have to do that a couple of times but this is a good way to tell too is where your magazine feeds in you can see the edge of the metal, it winds right up with the wood. Your last step is you're gonna take your trigger assembly, make sure that your trigger guard is rotated all the way down. And I generally have quite a bit of trouble with this one too. Not trouble, but I gotta try it a couple of times. It's gonna slide in there just at a certain point. And you can see indentions where this bottom edge of the metal sits on the wood all the way back that feels good take your trigger guard pull back and it'll slide right well not slide it should click right into mine didn't because about pinched my finger right there that hurt uh, but it'll fit right into that hole and you should be good to go rack your action a couple of times make sure everything functions as it should and unsafe and you are good to go